What is going on guys, Zizal back with another video and I'm back with another story time. It's been a minute that I brought out my uh, soothing ASMR commentary for you. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Nah, for real, for real. I've had so many jobs in my lifetime already, it's crazy. And um, I'm not a security guard anymore if you're wondering and uh, I had a job at Smoothie King and I'm no longer there already and uh, I'm at the gas station right now I work at a gas station and um, not so much dealing with other people with uh, security but with a lot of the jobs that I've had it's dealing with people and all the crazy shit that they decide to do on the daily whether they're in a good mood a bad mood um, they don't they just simply don't like your face you know that's a that's a really reoccurring one and um sometimes the universe just doesn't like you on a specific day but y'all probably already know i have hella fucking work stories because i'm always fucking working but uh today we need to talk about the different women in customer service uh and uh just working in general so um my last job, the job that uh, I was most recently at, but I am no longer with Smoothie King. Um, the woman that I I encountered there, very interesting, very interesting. The 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 type of people Smoothie King attracts, it, it it's hard to to put your finger on it, but it's a combination of fake, crazy, hormonal. Um, whitewashed very whitewashed um and it's weird okay and this is just from a haitian american uh born in america perspective uh, just an african american 20 year old perspective but um you get pregnant women coming in there a lot uh fat people thinking that uh, a smoothie is going to somehow fix their issues their health issues like they'll dead ass come in and it's like you know like what's gonna get my body right and then you're like uh i mean we got vegan smoothies you feel me and they're like i'm gonna get that and it's like okay um but i'm not trying to body shame i'm not trying to body shame i'm not but nah for real for real i'm not trying to be fake i never w would try and be fake at smoothie king I'm gonna answer any question you have to the best of my ability. You know, you're gonna ask me what's the best smoothie we got, what I personally recommend. I'm gonna put you on. It's the Island Impact. You add strawberries to that joint, then you add some frozen yogurt, not the butter pecan ice cream. That, that's pretty nasty. I'm not gonna lie. But if you add some frozen yogurt to it, and then maybe, maybe some, what is it? Is it gladiator protein? I forget which protein it is, but it adds a nice consistency consistency to it but honestly you don't even need it as long as you add the frozen yogurt and strawberries with the island impact you good you good but the raptors the raptors don't technically have a star, have a star like siakam yeah. siakam is great and shit but i don't think siakam is there yet I got okay and you negotiate and you propose trade right you guys propose trade Okay. Oh, finally, the Golden State Warriors are about you. Thank you. Thank you. You, just take that that shit. you didn't do that shit. <laughs> no, I did do that shit. I swear to God. Oh, no. I did the same thing. In also, I hope it doesn't bother you that there are two simultaneous videos happening at the same time. But, um, yeah, I'm being a menace in 2K. <laughs> uh, I, I, need to, I need to know how to play. I need to set plays. Because this shit can't. We can't run freelance all the time. Oh, y'all better than me. I don't know what the place is. I can't is. run a freelance. I can't do this anymore. Y'all. <laughs> Screen merchant forever. Yeah, me. Yep. That's me. Hey, I'm not gonna lie. You gonna get your shit locked up if we play each other. Didn't I beat you? <laughs> hey, yo. That, that's a crazy... Alright, bet. Nah, I got your date circled. I got your date. I got your date nah, circled. Man. I ain't gonna lie. Nah, I know that you came up. I know that you came up. So <laughs> nah, no, 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 I got you. I got you. You see, you, you, you're pulling up the receipts from the old franchise. I got you. Nah, I ain't gonna say less. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but back on track. Back onto the story, my guys and gals. With Smoothie King, it was it was really weird, man. You, 
I, I met a cool ass person and my coworker, the main person that worked there. Um, we're just gonna give her the name of uh, Didi. But uh, Didi was real fire. I fucked with her long ways. I even seen her children, all that shit. But what you gonna call it? It just wasn't meant to be in terms of me working there. And uh, the boss and me, we got off on the wrong foot because of a multitude of reasons. And uh, our relationship got better, but you know, school and just my time, you know, is very important to me. So I was like, yeah, this this job is pretty dead. It's only ten dollars an hour, and you're getting put for like four hour shifts. Even if you pick up a whole bunch of days, it's just a four hour shift and ten dollars. So it's like a forty dollar check for that day. And it's like, oh, well, you get tips. And it's like, well, nah, bro. If I'm not getting even like one raise, like a dollar raise, then it's just dead. And so um, that's why I ended up leaving. But um, this story is probably what started to put my, my pinky toe out the door. Probably not. I, let, let's just say my whole foot out the door. Great. Not both my feet out the door. All right. All right. So this is probably what had my foot out the door incidentally. And um. It was a day that I wasn't supposed to be working. It was a Saturday to be more specific. And I remember getting up at like 6 a.m. for my gas station job till 3. And I'm not sure. I really can't remember if it was 3.30 or 4.30. But I mean, the hours there were just so dead. So it was like 3.30, 4.30 till like 7. All right. Really short shift but a, a busy shift because it's a it's a weekend and it's late at night so people want smoothie king as like a dessert or something but like i just find it i just find that really disgusting you can just go get ice cream or frozen yogurt not smoothie king but you know i fuck with it i'm more of like a morning smoothie person or like a daytime smoothie person but you know to each his own you feel me and uh i remember getting there and just and just instantly, bro. Like I was, I was already annoyed because people at the gas station. I I got some gas station stories. Don't worry. But I get there and it's already packed. It's already packed. And there's two people working there, man. All right. And that's how it is most of the time. You know, on rare occasions will there be three people working at at least this location. Um, it's a two-man job essentially, unless the boss is there, then it's the three of y'all. But at this given moment, it was three of us, and it was still going crazy. And I remember when I got there, I'm just like thinking about how I worked. Um, I worked Fridays, so I had worked there the day before. All right, so I'm, I'm working consistently, and I usually get off on Fridays. I think three thirty. <laughs> So, I mean, that's like almost like a school day. But, you know, I was just there yesterday. And I remember mopping. I remember cleaning a lot because that was the issue. The people that worked the afternoon and just the other people that just weren't us in the morning, just none of them knew how to clean. And, I mean, sometimes, I'm not going to lie to you, it wasn't even like something that deep. It was like blueberry that somehow got like on the wall like in the corner but like no one really be looking at the corner type shit it's like the counters are clean like the majority of what a customer would see and what needs to be cleaned after a hectic night shift you know all of that is clean and then y'all want to point out the muni school shit and then like it just it, it makes for a bad relationship with employee to boss or uh i guess uh top employee to well just other normal employees because like when you just bitch and complain about the little stuff like that then you know work morale goes down that's something that i mean it's a pretty given but when you're in the work field you can see it with your own eyes and how real people you know adjust to these type of situations but um to move on I just remember how dirty it was when I already got there. Like, I'm like, dog, I, I just cleaned yesterday. Like, now I low-key see why they be bitching and complaining. Because I'm looking at, you know, smoothies getting on the wall in places that I'm just like, how you even get it up there? Like, if you really think about it, we pouring the smoothies next to the, the glass, you know, windows and, like, the counter where the blenders are. So, how is there a smoothie above the freezer? Like, like I'm looking at the wall while I'm, you know, 
drowned in freaking orders. But I'm still looking at the wall like, how? Like, how? Like, I'm literally having a dilemma working with these other two guys. Now, I've worked with the other guy, like the main guy, the guy that's supposed to close. The guy that I'm relieving, I've never seen or worked with before. But the guy that I'm closing with, I know him. And he's not, you know, tip-top shape, like clean everything all the time. But I know that he knows how to clean. Like, he wouldn't let it get this bad. So I'm instantly just eyeballing this this new jit. If any of y'all know what a peon is, <laughs> that's or a poindexter. Like, he, I don't know, bro. He just looks like like Urkel from, from Family Matters, bro. Like, he just looks like one of those types. Like, just one of those clumsy, like, I don't get life yet type of kids. Which, you know, fair enough. You know, protect the youth. But... You got these spoons for what we use to, you know, for the powders to get a correct measurement of this specific protein to put in the blender. And it's all over the floor. And this man's stepping on and there's powder all over the floor. There's ice all over the floor. There's smoothie on the floor. There's smoothie on the walls. And I'm just looking at them like, like, there, there's no way you can move around like this. Like, I'm looking at him, he, he's going to get some butter pecan ice cream for th this Hulk, and then he'll scoop it, and then he'll somehow, like, get it in the blender, right? But then he'll drop the scoop. And I'm just like, how clumsy can you get? Like, it, it's not like he tripped or nothing. Like, I'm not saying that, like, th there's a series of events that follow. No, he just dropped it. And it just, it, on the floor it remained. On, on the floor it remained until we finally finished this storm of customers. I'm still in disbelief that he's dropped this much in the span that I've been there and in the span of me not being there and just none of it has been picked up. And I'm looking at my the, the dude that I'm closing with and he has that look of like, oh, or like the look on his face gave me like to realize like, oh, he really don't fuck with this shit like that. And I remember everything just a mess. Man's didn't clean nothing that he used. And him just clocking out and leaving and getting in whatever car to take him home. And I'm just like, wow. That's crazy. That That's crazy. Like, that that's all I really could say. Like, I'm sitting there talking with dude. And I just kept reiterating the fact that, like, that's crazy that pe people raise their kids like that. Like, he has no awareness to the fact of how big a mess he just made. And he just walked out, like, clocked out. And he really thinks he deserves a check crazy and niggas like that still get paid and you'll get the same pay as them maybe even less sometimes because at the end of the day the boss don't care but you know it's straight it's whatever and me and him are chilling and i'm cleaning what this what this nigga did like i'm i'm pissed because I then realized again that, like, dude, I cleaned just yesterday. Like, I'm talking about I sweep, mop the entire floor, and now it's sticky smoothie and, and protein powder everywhere. Like, it, it's bad. And there's obviously going to be customers that are going to continue to walk in. So, I'm pretty annoyed at this point. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sweeping up powders and stuff. And I'm picking up, like, all, all the scoops, and I'm getting them in the sink. We're washing them, all that shit. And at first, I wanted to, like, tackle the counters because the counters were filthy. Like, you know, you think the walls and floors are filthy. Well, where we're actually making the blender is, like, it's not like you can avoid the, the, the counter in the blender making process. So it, it's, it's even worse, but you, you don't even need me to explain that. And um, you get the visual. And so after I attacked the, the counters, it was the walls, the blenders, so like we could at least be able to make more smoothies when people came in. You know, you got to make sure that the fruit is uh, all replenished because after a wave of people, you know, you got to replace some fruit, make sure that we're stocked up. And every single time a person walks in, you know, you have to halt the whole cleaning operation and kind of like work around it. And... I'm not really sure at what point it really was. All I know is that I hadn't mopped yet. I was just sweeping. And I'm sweeping in the corner next to where we have the blenders. It's the end of the assembly line. The cash register where you would order and pay for your smoothie and all that is 
on the opposite end of where I am at, essentially. And uh, the blenders are where you would pick up the order. And so I'm sweeping in that corner because there's hella mess in terms of protein powder, straw lids, freaking, I don't even know, debris, like dirt. Like, I, I don't know, bro. I'm just sweeping in the corner. Like, I'm literally making a pile in this corner. It's not like I'm lollygagging, of course. And I remember, dude walks in. All right, and if you're from Broward, you know anything about Broward County, man, we got jits in this, we, we got jits, bro, like, that's all I can explain, and niggas that think that they hot shit, uh, niggas who are not hot shit, just, just niggas, man, that, that's another word for it, and uh, they cocky sometimes, they rude a lot of the times, uh, you know, it's just, who raised these jits, <laughs> you feel me, that's the question that you always ask yourself. And he's one of them jits, you know, mop head, you know, I don't give a fuck attitude, you know, he's sagging, you know, aggressively, you know, strolling through our shit. But he's on the phone type shit, and he's talking loud as hell. And so, you know, I do that, I don't even know, like, that old head, like, Denzel Washington, if he was in a movie-ass, like, take, double take, like, I'm sweeping, and I kind of look at him like, who raised this young man? Who, who raised this brother? And I just... <laughs> And I just go back to sweeping. <laughs> but nah, for real. I, I'm sweeping in this corner and I'm, I'm trying to get this pile done. Because like I said, I was really making a pile here. And he's already on the phone. He's at the counter. And he's still on the phone. You can hear him talking loud as hell. I kind of look at him. He ain't even like paying attention. He's just on the phone kind of just talking. Just vibing there. So I'm just like, alright, like. I guess he's just one of them chill niggas or like he's chilling right now type shit. So I try and finish my pile or whatever, give or take like, I don't know, 15 to 30 seconds. It's a pile, bro. I'm sweeping. All right. You're the only person there. All right. I put down the broom. I walk over. Mind you, there's been no talking. It's been silence between the two of us. There's no hostility. All right. There's no tension. Like I'm, conf I'm confused. And so when I finally... You know, look up, give him that acknowledgement. Like, yo, I'm ready. I'm at the, the, the computer. I'm here to put you in your order. We just chilling, right? Then he starts off the, the engagement with, oh, so, so now this bitch ready to take my order. Bro, 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 bro. Let me tell you something. If, if you want beef, if you want beef. Call somebody a bitch. Call me a bitch, bro. That that's when you want beef. That's when you want problems, and that's and that's when you lose, bro. When you do that, you, you're setting yourself up for failure with me. Don't don't fuck with me like that, bro. Don't do it, because it it will bring the evil, mischievous chess player Wilson in, into it, bro. I I I will always get the last laugh, bro. I always do, bro. Maybe it's a little delusional. Maybe maybe. Maybe, maybe I'm a little crazy, but I swear to you, don't do it. Do not, don't do it. Do not do it, okay? So after that, this nigga decides to fuck up again. After the blasphemy that he decides to utter in my face, he fucks up again. He comes in the Smoothie King, assuming that this is Subway. He assumes that this is Burger King, that he gets it his way. This is Smoothie King, not Burger King, my guy. He comes in. With this pitch of, I want uh this fruit, that fruit, this fruit smoothie. Now, the issue with this is, I'm not no techie. I know the menu like the back of my fucking hand. So, I'm going to be nice and just build you a smoothie, ass nigga. No, 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 no. We got a list of smoothies to choose from, base smoothies. And I will always tell the customer... That if you like these two smooth or these two fruits, look at these smoothies are around here, and then you can use that as a base. Take out what you don't want, add what you would like to add, and we can accustom to you that way. But just saying I want this, this, and that isn't gonna get the job done, especially if you this nigga, and if you are this rude. So he does that. He does that shit. He does that bit. And I'm not even trying to give him a hard time, but I told him exactly how it is, how it was. I'm not, I don't know what smoothie you want. You, you're going to have to be a little bit more specific, boss. 
then, then, then he keeps getting loose with the lips, you know, this, this B word, it keeps, it keeps flying around, you feel me? Yeah, it's time for this nigga to lose, bro, you gon' lose, you don't win, I win. <laughs> so mind you, just like how this video has been a minute, it's going on, that's how we were going on, bro, we just kept going and going, back and forth, bickering, this nigga... He's coming with the B word still talking about, yo, you know, bitch, now hurry up, make my smoothie type shit. Yeah, and it's like, I'm not going to lie to you, dog. <laughs> like, that's not how it works around here. Like, I don't understand what's up with these jits with these niggas out here. I I've been seeing a lot lately at the gas station where they really think that they run shit. Like, yes, you are the customer, bruh. But we both human beings at the end of the day. Like, if you don't treat me with some respect... You're not gonna get much respect back. I'm gonna just do my job. That that's it. So I'm doing my job, making this nigga's smoothie into an order. Like I'm just making an order. I'm not actually making the smoothie. Niggas telling me to hurry up. Damn right, I told him straight to his face. We taking things slow. On God, we taking that shit slow. And that shit finally printed, right? Um, the receipt. Uh, for at least the ticket, I mean, to follow the directions on the blender and build the smoothie. He hasn't paid yet. He decides to pay with cash. I think he gave me like a $20 bill or maybe a $10 bill, but he gave me cash. And, um, you know, I take it into the register. It was a 20-ounce smoothie, so I'm pretty sure it was around 6 $7. And um, I'm giving his, him his change back. I'll never forget this shit. I'm putting it into his hand. He catches the bills, and then there's the change. I'm giving him the change. There are, like, some quarters and nickels or whatever. You know, they're not pennies or dimes, I'm pretty sure. Either way, regardless, like, two coins fall out this nigga's hand, right? And he has, like, his hand out like a little fucking bitch. It's, like, cupped up, and it's, like... How the fuck is anybody, like, how how do you catch money with a cupped up hand? Like, it's the, it's the fruitiest shit I've seen, alright? And I, I'm not a homophobe or anything. I'm just, I'm just pissed, okay? And the shit falls, and then he decides to respond to this sequence of, sequence of events with, Now this bitch can't hand me my money. Dog, when I tell, when I tell you, I was like, man, can I strangle this dude? Like, like, what's a year in the pen, bro? Like, like I can assault this dude. Like, nothing will gonna happen. You feel? <laughs> so I'm not gonna lie. I had to lose ground to gain ground. All right, and what I mean by that is. I had to stoop to his level for a second because that was just utterly disrespectful, fam. Like, I didn't even cause that shit. He he knows who's being the bitch here. So I had to, I literally had to let him know. I'm just like, I'm not gonna lie, man. You really the bitch here, bro. If I'm if I'm keeping it a stack, you're a bitch. And I straight up said that to him, bro, because he he was really trying to get under my skin. By trying to, like, lean over the counter and, like, force the eye contact to let me know I'm a bitch to my face. But when he realized that wasn't working, like, I just kind of stared at him blankly like I was fried as shit or some shit, which I probably was. <laughs> like, when I said it to him, like, like you felt it. Like, he felt it. Like, he, he like, took a step back type shit. It was funny. But, um... I told him he was a bitch to his face, and then I told him why. That that's when I that's when I started to win. I lost some ground, but then I won when I gave him the why. And the why was because I was like, "Damn, dog, you a bitch one because you can't even control your fucking your attitude, bro. You all over the fucking place." And two, I am making your smoothie. Like, are you dumb? Like, I understand how I'm the bitch. Like, yeah, you can tell me to hurry up, but if I'm the one making the smoothie and this is my job, then I get to go as fast as I want. And and that being said, you're going to drink my smoothie. And that 
also being said, you paid for my smoothie, so you gonna drink my shit. And I'm like, damn, you really is a bitch then. Like, thank you for your seven dollars, my nigga, because I'm taking that shit and you're not getting it back. And when I said that to him, he, he lost it, bro. He went ballistic. <laughs> And the reason I say he went ballistic is because he instantly wanted a refund. When I said that, he was like, damn, I don't have any power in this situation anymore. Now give me my money back. <laughs> like, that's the funniest shit ever, bro. You really push it for a nigga to hurry up, make your smoothie, you my bitch. You, you got to make my smoothie, ha, ha, ha. But then when I say, damn, thank you for your money. You can't get this shit back now, nigga. Like, you going to drink my smoothie. That's when it switches to, I want my money back. Now, I bet some people are listening right now, and they're like, yeah, this is weird. This is Petty Wilson. The customer is always right. Like, I don't understand how you're winning this. Like, you got to give him his money back. Well, actually, I don't because I don't have the authority to issue um, a refund. He actually has to either get in touch with corporate if it's that big of an issue with him or uh, find a way to get in touch with my boss who can issue him, uh, uh, what you might call it, a refund but we both know that he doesn't want to do that because of the way he's been acting and we have this all on camera you know his hostility towards me we have brand new 360 4k cameras and so i'm chilling i'm really just chilling and uh my co-worker the one that i'm supposed to be closing with he hears all this he was um in the back i bet some people are wondering like where is this nigga where was he yeah he was in the back actually redoing the powders and all that shit all the shit that that other jit messed up and so he comes out and he's like what is this like what's the hubba puff <laughs> and he's like dude i'm gonna just make this dude smoothie because i broke it down to him and like he gave me that look of just like i understand but like I don't understand why it has to become this deep. And I literally looked back at him. I was like, dog, I feel you. Like, I don't understand it either. It's like, you see how calm and I'm just chilling, bro. Like, I just had to let that nigga know, like, ain't nobody his fucking mate around here type shit. And so he starts to get in, uh, or he starts making this man his smoothie. And it's some, some disgusting ass shit that probably won't even blend well. And uh, I, always, I kept that in mind. And so... I already handled the pile that's by the pickup line, so I'm not going down there because he has to head down there to wait for his smoothie while the guy's assembling it. And he's actually making the smoothie, and he, he fully makes the smoothie. Don't get it twisted. He makes the full smoothie. And um, I remember I'm just sweeping by the register where I had rung him up, and he dropped the change and all that bullshit. And um, I'm sweeping over there. And he waits. He actually sits there and waits. He's on the phone still the entire time. I think he he needs to be on the phone to, you know, feel like he's somehow controlling the situation. When in reality, literal reality, he's not. And he gets the smoothie finally. And he's like, oh, yo, thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. And he like fucking, he like. He's like, oh, since you want to clean, bitch, like, he, like, slings that shit across the fucking store. And I just remember it just goes, Poosh, like, everywhere, like, all over the wall and floor and shit. And it's, like, this, like, light orange fucking smoothie. And it goes everywhere, bro. And he's like, yeah, clean that, bitch. And he just sprints out. Like, I ain't never seen a nigga clear it as fast as him. And he clears it. And he, whatchamacallit. His homeboys, I guess he was on the phone with. I'm not even fucking sure. They, like, pull up in, in, in their car or whatever. And he, he jumps in the back. And then he, he they skirt off. And I'm just like... They think they won some shit? Like, they, they think they did something? Because, let me break it down to y'all. He paid us $7 and something cents for a smoothie. That he picked. He picked that shit. Now, yeah, we did make it. And yeah, there is a mess on the floor. But he literally came the Smoothie King. Ruined his attitude or continued his ruined attitude for that day. Threw the merchandise that he, you know, he bought. And then ran out. 
and we have it on camera. Like his whole face. Like he he's never allowed back into the store. Now people really don't be caring like that. Like if you get banned from a mall, I bet you could just like not show up for like five years and then come back and you'll probably be straight type shit. And I'd probably go the same for the Smoothie King. And there's hella Smoothie Kings in this state. Like, the fuck? But it was just dumb. It was just like, this is just like, we're already cleaning. You paid us money. You lost, my nigga. And then I guess he wanted to, you know, rub it in all the way. So he, I remember... They, like, oh, yeah, pulled like, back, like, they reversed like, back to the store, like, in front of the store where the cameras are again. And he, like, is on his phone with a flash. And, like, I can see him, like, doing, like, the zoom-in shit with his fingers. And he's, like, trying to, like, get a video or a picture of me. And I'm just, like, dog, like, over a fucking smoothie, dog. Like, you came with the... Like, it would be one thing if I was the rude nigga. Like, I'm trying to give you bad customer service. But, like, you just being a bitch about it, bruh. So, like, shit. Bravo. Bravo. I guess you won something, bruh. Bravo. Man, Jesus fucking Christ. This video is so long. I don't understand where all this time went. But I also have a second story. So, this is probably, like, not even, like, the end of the video. So, you're hearing this, like, towards the middle. So, Jesus. Anyway, the reason why I left Smoothie King was because of this story right here. Now, I'll never forget this shit. If, if I'm keeping it honest, I'll probably never forget it. Because it, it just, it changed my outlook on just trusting a co-worker type shit like just trusting anyone really like i don't know like i always thought of co-workers like looking out for each other you feel me in a lot of the case and a lot of the time i mean that is true but this one time this one specific time the first time i've done it it was not true now what do i mean by the first time i've done it now at this job, you get paid by check. There is no direct deposit for some odd reason. You have to get a check and deposit that. And uh, I don't necessarily have a huge issue with it per se. It's just if that wasn't the case, I wouldn't have had this problem to begin with. But anywho, let's get into the story. It was a Wednesday. We get paid every two weeks Tuesday. So it was a Wednesday, a day after our checks arrive and it's the day I work so I go in and I obviously find my check where they keep it and um at this job they for some reason have it by the register and I mean actually a lot of jobs do it that way but just with the way that the store is built there is no real security in terms of hiding your check and keeping it safe unless it's all the way in the back in a safe or something or just at least in the back type shit but just it being in the main part of the store easily reachable across the counter by a customer it's just not safe to begin with and on this specific day i remember taking my check it's the second check i ever received from the job and i remember uh using my phone because the wells fargo app it has uh, the photo deposit shit. You can just snap photos of your check and deposit. I bet multiple banks have it. And um, with the shit, like, it, it requires you to have a dark background. And I remember, like, taking, like, our iPad or whatever, and its case is black. So, like, I use the case as, like, a black background or whatever. And I learned from this experience, it was a mistake, that you have to endorse your checks, especially if you're going to do uh, a mobile deposit. And my issue was uh, never endorsing or signing checks. And that was because I was so used to financial aid just sending me checks and all that shit. And those the only checks I really received. Everything else was direct deposit in terms of work. So the checks that I did receive, I was just used to just snapshotting it on my phone like I was doing then. And uh, it would hit my account. Like, thanks, uh, FAFSA, for my money. Boom. And that was it. But this check, I deposited on my phone. So I, I got the money. It was like 250 bro. 
I get $250 into my account. Mind you, I'm backed up on in, on bills. Like, I have things that I need to pay in terms of internet, I, like, videos, schoolwork. Just my life wouldn't work without having a consistent internet connection, of course. So, um, I had to pay my Comcast bill. Um, I think I had to help pay the water bill. And I also just needed, like, food, groceries. Like, I just needed money. Like, I didn't have much money when I first started working um, with Smoothie King. So, that was the whole point like so i can at least have some side money to do things and pay bills so i don't like starve out here and want to kill myself <laughs> and so i remember depositing it putting it in, into the envelope again and leaving it by the counter because i'm of course working like this is the middle of my shift like beginning of my shift or whatever and i'm just depositing my check and it wasn't actually the beginning of the shift not to think about it it was actually towards the end because I get in at around like 11 or something like that and I work until 3:30 and our main employee like our main person uh, I think I called her Didi she works from like open till like 2 p.m. so I'm there until she leaves and then I have another half hour at Smoothie King and Someone comes in at two. Now, this someone, let's give her a name, is CC. All right, CC comes in at two. All right, CC is there when I deposit my check. All right, so we're talking around two something, maybe three something before I have to leave at three thirty. I deposit my check there, and for some reason. For some reason, for real, it slips my mind to take my check home with me. But, you know, it's Smoothie King. So, even then, my dumbass back then would have just been like, bro, I can just get it next time I come into work. It's not that big of a deal. Now, little did I know, it was a big deal. And I even paid, like, my bills. Like, I had the instant shit, of course, like, the, the instant pay and... I also like manually paid some shit, but I used that check. All right, that check was used. The money was used. I went plus two fifty and I used that money. But then the next day, the next day, I look at my bank account, or I look at no, I just look at my phone because I have notifications from my bank. And what do I see? My check bounced. All right, it motherfucking bounced. Now, I, know, I bet you guys can assume, like, you know, oh, that bitch stole your shit. Yeah, yeah all right, I, I bet you can assume that. But, but let's dive deeper into this story because there's, of course, no way of me knowing that she stole it. Like, there's no way of me knowing what happened to my check. All right, all I know is that it bounced. There's no explanation as to why it bounced. It just bounces. And I have insufficient funds. Like, I'm negative in my bank account the next day. And I remember calling the bank, asking questions. And my biggest question, for real, to Wells Fargo was, if it's in my name, the check, like, it's addressed to me, my own personal address, and I deposit it first, how does it bounce out of my account the next day? Like, you know it's me like why is it like where is it going that makes no sense and the thing is if you're not you know used to having a bank account and you know shit bouncing out and how that all works i was actually completely right because they're sitting there like yeah we, we don't even know type shit so there was some method to this madness as to why it was happening but they didn't even know themselves and they were kind of avoiding me. And I remember I called like at least three, four times in the span of like two weeks just trying to figure this shit out with this bank. And they just couldn't help me, bro. They would literally send me to like deadlines. Like I would just be on hold forever or they'd like try and transfer me to a department and it would hang up. I was really getting ready to just give up, man. And then in that two weeks... I finally received what I've been waiting for. 
my big break, all right, in the case, all right, Th this was Wilson Sherlock Holmes type shit, because I bet you guys, you know, oh, I'm so smart, I couldn't predict it, shut up, bro, like, I literally outlined the story in a way for you to be able to assume, you know, the correct answer, okay, but in real time, there's really no way of knowing, bro, it just bounces, but I already, you know, had a suspicion of, it being left at Smoothie King, cause I, like honestly, my dumbass didn't even remember leaving it at Smoothie King. I was just like, damn, like, where did I put my check? Like, I always bring my check with me. I have a whole stack of checks in my room. I mean, not anymore. I probably disposed of them, but you know, I always they always made it back to my room. So I was confused as to why I didn't have you know my check. And then I was like, damn, maybe I left that Smoothie King. But, well, if I left that Smoothie King, then that means literally anybody could have took it. Like, like, it's, like, right there on the counter. And, like, in essence, nobody's check is safe. And any random customer stranger could have taken that check. But I was like, damn, well, if that's the case, then I'm, then I'm fucked. But when I got my, my big break in the case, it changed everything, man. It changed everything. Because I open up this letter in the mail from Wells Fargo. Thank God for Wells Fargo. And, you know, they didn't want to personally, you know, help me or call me. So they just put it in letter format. So I had to I had to go ZZZ Holmes mode. Zerlock Holmes mode. Okay, I'm going to stop. But I had to put two and two together. And in this uh, piece of mail, there was a letter. Letter was irrelevant to me. Um, it just essentially told me what I, you know, was going through pretty vaguely. It's like, yeah, I got a check for this amount of money, and then it bounced on this following day and the, into another account. Like, that's literally what the fucking letter was. It was like, bro, like, I, I know. So the second piece of paper was so fucking crucial. And on it, it was photocopies of my check. Two photo or two different photocopies like two sets um the first one was my like deposit like what i deposited through my phone the second on the other hand was obviously the same check but it was endorsed on the back but not by me now that was a big mistake came up came to bite me in the ass but we're looking at this endorsement right and it has CeCe's name signed on the back. Now, it isn't in cursive or anything. I mean, it is, but it's, like, pretty clearly CeCe. All right? And, you know, CeCe is essentially, we'll, we'll say CeCe is short for, like, Cinderella or whatever. So, it's not even their full fucking name. It's just CeCe. It's just, like, their nickname. And I'm just like, dog, like, but there's just... There's just no way of it being true. Like, that's just what I'm thinking to myself. Like, there's just no way that my own co-worker took that shit in broad daylight. And so I remember uh, telling my boss uh, what happened. And I'm just like, I have this proof. I think that this is what happened. And no one believed me. Or I should just say my boss didn't believe me. And didn't want to investigate it didn't really care to and i was really annoyed i was like i was i was pretty pissed if i if i, if I should say and it was because that was my check like that's literally my fucking money y'all don't give me any fucking hours here i like you know i barely get paid so when the one time i get a 250 check which is rare you know the one that i got after that was like 160 so it was like dog like that $100, that was so crucial. Like, I need that money. That was a pretty big check for me from this place based on the hours that I get. And they didn't want to reissue another check or anything like that at that point. So I'm just like, dog. Like, fuck y'all. Like, I, it, it's just me. But not until the next time I worked and I was working with Didi. Didi. I told her, I'm like, this and this happened, and I even have the evidence, and I n had the evidence that day, and I was telling her this, because CeCe was supposed to work the same shift 
as the time before when I'm assuming she stole my check. Mm -hmm. Still haven't been able to see the camera, so I don't even have that, like, that evidence. It's just this piece of paper. I texted her because we have a WhatsApp group chat. Her number's in there. You can see, uh, like, her fucking, her name there. And I remember texting her through WhatsApp and sending her literally, like, PDF, like, photocopies of the letter because you know she needs to see what i'm talking about type shit like i literally use the genius scan app on a fucking android to make sure that it is crystal crystal clear what i'm talking about and she refused to open like she never opened it probably to this day it's unopened but she wanted to respond in the group chat which was crazy 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 stuff and i remember just sitting there describing it to Dee, Dee and she's kind of getting annoyed for me and she's like talking to the boss and all this stuff trying to you know make them get their head out their asses and like yo like this is your fucking employee and we have a situation of a potential other employee stealing from not only him but the company because that is the company's check issued to a you know respective employee like like thank you like that makes perfect fucking sense like thank you for helping me in telling the boss to get her head out of her fucking ass all right we get in some initiative here but as that's going on i'm thinking real hard in my head like damn that means before i even got that letter in the mail you know proving that this person's name was signed on the back of this check. I was just up to guessing like anyone could have stole it. So the fact that I was working for those two weeks with her and she was being fake like, oh, how, how, how we doing, Wilson? How we feeling today? You know, it's a good day. How you doing today? I got that for two straight weeks. That fake shit for two straight weeks. Not even knowing. That she was doing fuck all with my fucking check. Which is crazy. Because I was down horrendous for those two weeks. I wasn't eating shit. I was malnourished as fuck. All I was doing was just drinking water from a fridge. bro. That's the majority of my diet. That's the majority of what it consisted of. And I remember just like. Really really being down bad. And I'm just like. I can't wait to figure out who the fuck took my money. And I end up figuring out exactly who did it. And it took a while, but my boss finally listened, looked at the cameras. She didn't even tell me the initial day that she found out. She waited and told Dee Dee, then told me the next day that, oh, you were right. Like, and Dee Dee was telling me, like, even later than that, like, yeah, it kind of seemed like she was annoyed that you were right. Like, she just wanted it to be your own problem, and she didn't want it to get big, and, you know... I guess trying to save your own ass, whatever, but, like, dog, that's my fucking money, like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't play that shit, right, we're not playing that shit over here, and all that fake shit that I sustained from Smoothie King, it, it, it was just enough to leave, and the fact that that day when I was waiting there, I literally showed up with the letter in hand, all the evidence needed, I showed up to Smoothie King that day, I told Dee Dee about it and everything, and I'm sitting there waiting for CC to show up because I know that I work the 11 to 3.30 shift and she works the 2 to whenever she leaves or closes shift. So there's a hour and 30 minute window where I'm supposed to see her because we work together. But that day, that day in particular, Dee Dee went ahead and was just so... In shock that that was even a possibility, like someone would be dumb enough to steal another employee's check in broad daylight with the new camera system. Like, you're going to get caught. You're going to get found out, essentially, if it gets to that point. And so she's just like, no way. And she ends up texting CC, you know, behind my back without my, you know, my permission or telling her to, you know, not I'm not urging her to do that. She just did it. And she ends up showing me the text later. And it's like. Oh, why would I, why would I steal from that bum man nigga Wilson? All she was doing was asking if she knew anything about the disappearance of my check. I texted her through the WhatsApp group chat number that she had. And she didn't want to respond to me, but she responded to Didi. That's crazy, right? Crazy. And so she goes to instantly, you know, 
disrespecting me in my name and, you know, insulting me, essentially, because I'm, quote unquote, accusing her of stealing my check. Now, deep down, I'm accusing her of stealing my fucking check. But on the surface, legally, all I'm doing is, you know, probing, asking questions about the whereabouts of my check, if you know anything, because you were there literally the last time I had my check. So it's either you, one of the other people that works here, or... Or the off chance, what I originally thought, someone stole my check, like a like a customer. But, you know, when you get photo fucking evidence of Cece signing her name on the back of your fucking check, endorsing that shit, it's a completely different issue, a completely different story. And um, she straight up didn't show up and ended up saying that it was her birthday, which apparently was true, but she had... Uh, someone else another guy that works there come in for her but she was supposed to come in at two and the thing about two o'clock is that's when Dee, Dee gets off and Dee, Dee has to leave in order to pick up her kids her children from school or from the bus stop and take them home if not they get sent back to the school and Dee, Dee doesn't have a car like she literally walks everywhere to take care of these kids she works non-stop like it's tough on her so you know i feel her on that personal level i'm not trying to ruin anybody's day that's why i don't want to go to court or nothing like i'm just asking questions you feel me and so Dee, Dee has to go and if cc's not there at two which she wasn't it looks really suspicious and bad and so this relief guy that ends up coming in replace of cc ends up coming like 40 fucking minutes late which is crazy right and um when he shows up, Dee Dee is still there. I think she ended up, like, going to get her children from across the street and then bringing them and sitting them in the back, like, where they keep the powders and shit, just to, like, you know, sit there and keep them safe, which is, you know, you, you got to do what you got to do. But when, when the relief guy shows up, we ask him, or at least she asks him, like, what happened? Like, why are you so late? Like, why isn't she here? Why are y'all doing this? And he's like... I don't know, like, I just learned about this today. Like, I just learned about this just now at 2. And we're like, bruh. And I look at Dee Dee, and she looks at me, and I'm just like, I cracked the case. <laughs> and what's so funny about all that is, like, she has her girlfriend uh, that she keeps on the phone. She has, like, a Bluetooth headset in for the majority of her shift. And so from time to time, like, I'll dead ass be thinking that Dee Dee's talking to me, and she's just having a whole conversation with her girl. And... On this particular day, she was on the phone with her girl type shit, and her girl was just straight up in her ear, and she would tell me from time to time, she's like, yeah, my girl won't shut up, like, you are right, she believes you 100%, she thinks that bitch stole your check, like, the way that she started insulting you, it, like, instant red flag, she 100% stole your check, so, uh, y'all heard it here first, folks, if a, if a black woman, or just, I guess, a woman starts insulting you, like, heavy, for, you know, not even accusing them of something, just asking questions, that's how you know you're right, man. And, hey, man, I always take the humble, quiet approach, so I keep all my cards close to my chest. If I'm all, if all I gotta do is ask a question and you fold it like that, shit, say less. And I obviously ended up getting my check, and they ended up figuring out that this girl uh, stole my check and took it to am scott and deposit it there and so you can cash it there just endorse it or whatever and they give you the check or the money for of the check which makes no sense because it was in my account first like like imagine it's in your account you pay your bills you know everything that you got to do my internet bill like i wouldn't be able to do school what i'm doing right now with you know my, my platform and all that shit i wouldn't be able to do any of that without a stable internet connection so i have to do that i have to pay like the water bill help pay my insurance i obviously have to eat buy groceries because we're, we're down bad like my father literally is an uber driver and he's trying to take care of other shit you feel me like it, life is bigger than just you you feel me and um it's just fucked up real fucked up and the fact that it bounced out of my account after i paid those bills and i went negative it was like come the fuck on bruh but shit that's essentially the whole story uh Smoothie King lost five hundred dollars. I got my two fifty. She got my two fifty. So I guess it's all even in that respect. But the real fucked up a fucked up part about Smoothie King and why I you know I left because I had to really think about what happened, and they wanted me to go after her in court, 
And I'm like, well, number one, y'all ain't even believe me in the beginning, so fuck y'all. And two, like, I don't want to go through the headache of going to court with an ex-coworker. Like, bro, over $250? Like, yeah, I need the $250, but missing whatever I might have to do on that court date or set of court dates in order to just get that check back. If I have to, you know, lawyer up or whatever in the police guy when he showed up because I had to file a report or you're about to file a report they were telling me that like yo you don't need what you might call it to spend any money to get what you need but i don't fucking know still like it's just a waste of time in my opinion like if y'all really care about y'all employees and someone stealing his fucking check literally where y'all keep the checks like on the fucking like the cash register my nigga like what and y'all not gonna do anything about that and then when I finally push and get the, the staff leader to 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 make y'all listen, that's when y'all want to finally, like, nah, fuck out of here, bro. I'm no one's guinea pig. It's $10 an hour for, like, a four-hour shift, all right? Barely getting any work. Nobody wants to work there. Nobody cleans, so you're doing extra work. And their excuse for you not getting a raise in pay is because you get tips, but then they also steal the tips if someone tips with their debit card. Which, I don't know if y'all have ever worked in food service or anything like that, but that's a really, really fucked up thing. Because if someone is paying with card, which most people do nowadays, and y'all have a tip option, literally as one of the prompts when they're ringing up anything, like, it is always there. I don't know how many times people have come into the store and they're like, oh, I left you a tip, by the way, $13. And I'm like, damn. But guess what? That shit never sees your check. It never sees your pocket. It never sees your, your eyeballs. But your eyeballs don't see it, and it don't see your eyeballs. Because that shit goes straight to the company. Because it's broken, or whatever the fuck they be telling us. So, fuck them for that. But we have a tip jar, but it's like, dog, niggas are literally just taking, like, the two pennies that I gave them in change and dropping in there. And, yeah, I would take that shit because, hey, bruh, I, like I said, I literally be down bad. I have a whole change ca caddy. Change is going to become rare within the next couple of years, decades, or whatnot. So it is a good investment to, you know, save your change. But, like, dog, you're, you're gonna, really going to withhold money from me? Like, these niggas are just so crab, bro. Corporate America be so crab to their employees. No one wants to work there for the long term. Like, fuck that. I'd rather be an entrepreneur or just go from job to job whenever necessary to make ends meet. And, I mean, I'm not trying to live paycheck to paycheck, of course, but... Niggas just gotta understand how the world really works, you know. Your hand is forced sometimes. Sometimes you really don't want to do the things that you have to do in order to get to where you want to go. And you gotta learn that shit quick as you grow up in this world, man. We're forever evolving and going like faster type shit. So kids are gonna have to grow up quicker and quicker, I feel like. But yeah. This is a 60 fucking minute. This is an hour long ZZZ special. This is what's been going on in my life. This is why I haven't been like gaming and doing all the fun shit that I used to do. I've been work mode, man. I've been, whatchamacallit, boss man Z. I, I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying, bro. Y'all take it easy for real. If y'all enjoy story times, let me know. Um, leave a comment, a like, all that good shit. Don't forget to subscribe if you're listening to this. I got the ASMR voice, you feel me? I know y'all dig the voice. For real, for real. Uh, I might even do, like, podcasts of just story. Like, put all my stories on just, like, podcast, like, format type shit. So you can just listen, you feel me? There's no gameplay needed. But, for real, that's it. It's been your boy ZZZ. Stories are definitely on the way. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Peace.